Hello everyone and welcome back to our last day of this Greninja Champion deck. Um, so far we, we've done okay, we've had some very interesting matches, not only in the English video but in the Spanish video yesterday. So hopefully we find two very worthwhile games as well and we can finish off the week with um, a couple of wins, hopefully. Now it's already been two weeks since Mexico Nationals. Um, still still quite a long time well still six weeks seven weeks until until worlds um this weekend though is u.s national so we'll see if there are any surprises there um i do expect the japanese results to have some effect on the meta game i do expect um dark right carpet or giratina to have an impact on the meta game and people's deck choices i do feel like we will also see more more Mega Sceptile and definitely more Vileplume with random combinations like Psyguard, like um, Dark Pokemon, things like that. It'll be interesting to see what happens. Now, if any of you are watching this video before participating, best of luck to you guys. And wow, this hand is not ideal. <laughs> um, best of luck to you guys. I wish you the best, best of luck. And yeah, hopefully one of the viewers wins nationals, I guess. I'll definitely be taking a look at the stream. And wow, we are up against a fairy type deck. Okay, so I'm going to attach the energy to Froakie and I'm going to pass. I obviously don't want to Wallies because I'm all, I already have two Frogadiers in hand. Can't afford to discard two and water duplicates for one or none. <laughs> that would be atrocious. And yeah, we'll see what happens now. Um, there's a Flabebe, so it's actually not, um, I guess, the standard. Might be Florges Break, which is an interesting card. And yeah, we'll see what happens. My opponent only attacks, does 10 damage. I top deck a Break, which I also do not want to discard, but I don't really have a choice. But just looking at my opponent's deck, doesn't feel like it's going to be too, too complicated competitive so we might as well um, take advantage of that we won't be able to to return the frog here in order to water duplicates for four potentially only one if one frog here is priced now do i want to ultra ball probably not at least not yet um no frog here is priced that's great and there's a victory okay so that's a dot game um Let's go right away and find our next game. And yeah, next week, guys, um, unless something really weird and different wins US Nationals, I will probably be featuring Dark Ride Giratina, but I am going to wait to see the results until I begin recording um, the decks for next week. I mean, I could pre-record something different, but um, I do want to feature whatever wins. I definitely want to feature whatever wins. And okay, so dark psychic colorless might mean a dark um, deck with Garbodor, so this could be interesting. Now, one of the modifications I've been thinking for Greninja Break is that since item lock seems to ge seems to be getting pretty popular, and um, Garbodor as well, I do feel like this deck really needs a second megaphone and potentially another Lysander. And well, never mind, it's actually Trevenant. Um, needs both of those so I've been considering um, generally been considering dropping all three trainers mails wow <laughs> man what a hand what a freaking awful hand <laughs> um, I've been considering dropping all those um, the three trainers mails for a second megaphone a second lysander and a fourth sycamore i think that would be the best thing i could do now okay so i do get a lysander which huh man this this hand really sucks okay i will be able to discard the energy which is nice and deal 10 damage which i don't think will matter my opponent only has three cards in his hand. 
Um, with the Lysander, I do guarantee that I might be able to top deck something useful um, and use it, unless he only evolves twice and doesn't do anything else. Let's see what my opponent's three card hand has. Um, he has a stadium, so he will immediately be able to evolve, and he has an Enove. That's pretty good for us. Um, I also got back the Lysander, so we can still use it potentially. Got rid of an energy, which maybe late game could matter. And wow, crushing hammer. Okay, great. Tails. Um, he's gonna ascension. So, problem is, I still do not have an energy. So, what do I do? Do I risk. Do I risk. Or do I simply pass on the quad frogadier? Because, yeah. Fisherman could be really useful later on. So, I'm gonna risk not getting an energy. And there we go. <laughs> there we go. No energy. Which really, really sucks. Okay. Um, nothing really I can do about that. I guess I will bench one Froki. Because I might end up evolving the Frogadier. And I'm going to do 10 damage. Um, you never know when it might come useful. I really doubt it will be. But you never know. So there's more phantoms, more phantoms, there's the break. Um, it's gonna come down once again, like on Wednesday's videos, um, to how easily can I draw my stadiums, how easily can he draw his stadiums. Yeah, a lot of different factors. There's a stadium immediately. Now maybe... Okay, another Crushing Hammer Tails, that's great for us. He gets to Silent Fear. And now benching that throw key doesn't seem like the smartest move. Okay, I do top deck a frogadier to save the throw key potentially. Um, I guess I will bench the remoraid, and I'm gonna evolve into Greninja right away because I could start putting pressure onto him. So that begs the question: Do I make my deck my deck thinner by benching throw key? I guess <laughs> in my mind that was the best play possible. <sighs> no energy still. No energy still. Ah. Okay. Well, at least I have Lysander for next turn. So I'm gonna deal 10 damage. <laughs> um, Jirachi will go down, everything else will get 30 damage dealt to it. But I do have a Sycamore for next turn. Which is pretty nice. Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. Wow. Okay. Okay, okay. Oh. Oh man, come on. Okay, I have to survive more than anything. So I'm, uh, I'm gonna have to sacrifice the energy because I need to keep the rough seas around. Oh man, that really sucked. I mean, we got energy on the stadium. That was best case scenario, but he had the delinquent already. And that sucked. And I top deck. Pretty much useless card. But I guess I do get to heal off the damage. Cannot do anything else besides pass. <sighs> that was really frustrating though. And yeah, he's gonna be able to use Silent Fear, or Tree Slam rather, which deals more damage. I really need something now. I really, really... Oh, not that. Definitely not that. Okay, so I sacrifice something here right now. I sacrifice the Froki, I think. Because I can still top deck Remoraid or Wallis, which would net me more cards. So I sacrifice Froki. Now, my opponent isn't doing anything else either. He only has one Trevenant as well, so even Lysander would be useful at this point in time. But at least I get to heal off the damage he deals. Somewhat. Not being too effective at that though. Um, I do heal 30 now. Oh! Come on, one energy. If I had one energy, I could be pressuring my opponent so, so much. So, so much. Ah, oh, come on. 
Oh, man. Yeah, I have the rough seas, but without energy, it doesn't matter. Oh. Man, I only need energy. And I could be closing out this game pretty nicely. Pretty, pretty nicely. As long as he does... <sighs> Well, that's game. <laughs> it's really frustrating to play against item luck. Okay. <laughs> now I need two energy to one hit KO this turn and break. But I do not even get one energy. Ugh. And I do get a fisherman. And there's two energy in my discard pile. <laughs> Which is just enough I guess and he's not playing energy himself but he will not KO Octillery this upcoming turn damn it how did I not draw a single energy card if I had drawn one energy card I would have been in a great position <laughs> Okay, red card, at least I get Octillery. And I get energy, okay. And an N. That's nice. That's kinda nice. Okay. It's gonna Silent Fear. Yep. <laughs> now, I need 100% my AC. Or else I lose and my last stadium. Okay, I do get the AC and an energy. So maybe I have a chance, but not really. Because he will only need one energy afterwards to win. Okay, so in Silent Fears, my <laughs> Greninja Break is 10 damage away from getting KO'd. Um, okay, so I, at least I will draw a prize card here. I will use Giant Water Shuriken on the active and then I Moonlight Slash and I mean, yeah, sure I'll bench the Remorade but I still lose I'll bench both Remorades yeah, I'll bench both Remorades he only needs one energy and he wins that's all he needs oh boy so barely get a KO now, can I find my last stadium in time? Probably not. Before he gets an energy, he's only played 4 energy total. If he gives Greninja break, that's a 100% game. If he doesn't... Oh man, he's gonna find Shaman. Oh, and he had a Sycamore <laughs> anyways in his hand. So that end did nothing for me. And that's gonna be game, guys. It's gonna be game. I mean, there's no way he doesn't find an energy. Yeah, he's gonna super out exclusively energy. Yeah, he has two. He puts back both, and since he did discard the Sycamore, he obviously has Sycamore in his hand. <laughs> he discards another Sycamore, even. He discards another Sycamore, so he has another one in his hand. Yeah. <laughs> Why discard Sycamore instead of the Verse Seeker and then play the Verse Seeker to get back Sycamore? I will never know. But there is absolutely no way my opponent doesn't get an energy, so that's a 100% game. I mean, <laughs> those red cards. Those red cards were all the difference in the world. And that's 0 2 against Trevenant, guys. Um, definitely fourth stadium. Um, the trainer's mails turning into Sycamore and Lysander would really help when you're under item lock, so they would strengthen that matchup as well. Could even put the fourth rough season instead of the second megaphone if you're feeling really fancy. Um, I mean, there's a ton of options, but I do feel like trainer's mail is expendable. 
I do feel like trainer's mail is a bit expendable. But what can you do? What can you do at that point? Um, you definitely need some sort of decent flow of supporter cards or energy to beat um, to beat item lock and the previous game or the game on Wednesday were not the case. So now we're up against a dark deck with Galade and Sorark. Does he have Vespiquen as well? Or is it a standard Eveltal Galad Sorark? If it's a standard Eveltal Galad Sorark, I'll be pretty comfortable with the matchup. Um, definitely feel like I'm a huge favorite in that. But if not. Okay, I do want my mulligan, definitely. <laughs> Not a useful card. But I do top deck a dive ball, which is nice. So, with the dive ball, I'm gonna see what's in there. Um, the artillery is available. There is one Greninja prized. Um, there's no ones prized. There's one dive ball prized. There's one energy prized. There's one sycamore prized. Okay. So. Definitely gonna grab another Froki. Just in case he gets a crazy Max Elixir turn and he KOs me. Um, then with the Trainer's Mail, I'm gonna see what I get. Nothing useful. And therefore, I'm just gonna end. Um, no advantage to my opponent. I do get a fresh set of six new cards. I do get Frogadier, I do get another Froki. And I do get Jirachi, but I do not get an energy. So I'm just gonna pass. Um, no need to bench anything else. And we'll see how this goes. Um, Kalade could definitely make things more complicated for us, since it can one hit KO Greninja. And it can potentially one hit KO a break if it has a muscle band and you play a Giovanni's as well. So that's something to keep in mind. Now, he discarded two Kalates, but no Maxis, so that might indicate that he has the Maxis already in his hand. Um, going for Shaman, then maybe not. Yeah, definitely he, he is using the ability, because otherwise, there's if he had Maxis as his last card in hand, he definitely had no reason to play the Shaman, or to go for Shaman, he would have gone for Veltal, he would have gone for Zorua potentially. But okay, we see that he doesn't get the maxis, which is nice. He does get some energy advantage onto a Veltal. That's fine because I really don't, um, I won't get too fancy with energy attachments. And I very fortunately top deck the energy I needed. So the question is, do I N and do I bench Jirachi? Because benching Jirachi means no access to artillery. So I guess the answer is no, because I do think Octillery is more useful right now. And there we go, there's Remorade and Octillery. So really couldn't ask for a better hand. Really couldn't ask for a better for a better turn one and turn two setups. Especially after going first. Because my opponent, I mean, he needs a lot of cards to KO the Frogadier. Well not a lot. He needs an energy. No, he needs. He needs a double colorless and a floatstone or an energy and a fighting fury belt, but he needed the fighting fury belt on the belt Alex. By attaching to the active, he's pretty much giving up on on KOing my Frogadier. He will leave 10, 10 residual damage, which is not a big deal. Definitely not a big deal. Does find the floatstone for Zorua. But we're fine because he'll probably be tempted to attach another tool card to to Eveltal EX. So eventually we should be able to to get rid of everything through Megaphone. And yeah, that deck also usually doesn't play Stadium cards. So Rough Seas will be pretty pretty useful here. So first off, I'm gonna heal. Then. Question is, I can't go into the break through Ultra Ball and then Wallies, but is that what I want to do? Because my opponent did go for Zorark. 
But, I mean, Sword Arc is not a threat as long as I um, shadow stitching. So, yeah, definitely gonna gonna do that. I'm gonna Greninja, the active. Gonna shadow stitching. And I'm gonna Wallies into the break. And then I'm gonna uh, use Octillery for a brand new four cards. And I can start putting damage onto Eveltal or even KO the. Um, the Zorua if I do get a single energy so yep there's two energy even so gonna giant water shuriken onto Zorua which is I think the bigger threat on my opponent's bench and now you could make a case um, for me to use for me to use moonlight slash instead but meh not really a big threat so I'm just gonna shadow stitch in here we're in no hurry to win this match and surprisingly we are ahead <laughs> instead of our opponent being ahead in prices we are ahead in prices so definitely like some of the most ideal turns the only thing that could have made this better is drawing a Greninja and yeah there you go there's the victory so yeah um gonna leave the uh, the video there guys um i hope you enjoyed watching sorry about the frustrating loss with trevenant um definitely i tried my best to bring it back um i think i could have if i had had a bit better flow of supporters or item cards and yeah that's it for me guys thank you so much for watching next week a brand new deck as always and I'm trying, well I've come up with something new and unique for the TCG, um, probably going up on Sundays, but that will probably start after Worlds. But I'm definitely really excited about that, and it's something a bit more casual, not as competitive. So hopefully you guys will will enjoy it as well, because it, the Pokemon trading card game is not only about competing, but it's also about having fun. And I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have a ton of fun with what I'm preparing. But that's it from me guys, thank you so much for your support, please leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it, and I will see you guys on Sunday when I announce the, the brand new deck, okay? Thank you guys, and bye bye.